Hi, and welcome back to our YouTube live series on SAP Business Technology Platform. Our focus today is on SAP HANA Cloud, and I'm joined here with Daniel Dukes. During this session, you'll see a live product demo and learn how you can get started with BTP and SAP HANA Cloud for free. With almost 100 services available, SAP BTP allows you to accelerate cross-functional innovation and unlock your business potential. The platform brings together data and analytics, artificial intelligence, application development, integration, and process automation in one unified environment. BTP is the foundation upon which enterprise applications are built, including enterprise resource planning, customer relationship management, and supply chain management apps. And BTP makes those apps work well together. With that, allow me to introduce Daniel from the SAP HANA Cloud team. Hi, Ali. Um, thanks for inviting me today. And I'm excited to talk to, to you and the rest of the viewers about how SAP HANA Cloud truly is the foundation for intelligent data applications. So let me start sharing my screen. And while that's coming up, a little bit about myself. Um, I've been with SAP 11 years now, all, folk, all those years focused on SAP HANA. And those 11 years, I've been very passionate in, about sharing with our customers, sharing with our partners, sharing with the ecosystem about SAP HANA Cloud and how it is truly a game changer and how it is truly the foundation for intelligent data applications. And when I talk with customers, I really like to point out there's there's three things that that everybody should know about SAP HANA. First is that it is extremely fast. And the reason it's fast is that all of its processing is done in memory, unlike traditional databases where they store data on disk and cache into memory. SAP HANA and SAP HANA Cloud all are in-memory database engines. The second thing I like to talk to customers about is, is that SAP HANA is lean. And what I mean by that is SAP HANA Cloud has the ability to store its data in multiple data tiers, all dependent upon how you, as a developer and your end users, wish to access the data. So you certainly can store all your data in memory and have that lightning fast speed. Or you can choose to store your data on disk inside the HANA Cloud database itself for kind of that medium performance or that lukewarm, if you will, if you look at it in, in terms of temperature. And you can also store your data in an attached data lake. And so with that, SAP HANA Cloud allows you, once again, to store the data in the right place, but you only have to store each piece of data once. So when you think about the data access speeds of your customers and your end users, and they need it instant, they need it um, at the touch of the fingertips, with the query, you need fast query responses, that's data you want to store in memory. If it's not as critical, once again, store it in disk. And um, for those occasional asset access patterns, or even if you need to only access data once a year, if you're just storing it long term, take advantage of the data lake. The third thing I like to point out about SAP on a cloud is that it truly is the foundation for um, innovation is the foundation for you to, to be able to build intelligent data apps. And because it's simple and because it's fast um, and allows you to have lean architectures is that it now gives you the ability to take advantage of um, extra resources, whether that's from the database itself, because you can push down all of that logic into the database and you don't have to incorporate it into your application layer or um, whether it's um, from your personnel side. Um, that's because, especially with it being a cloud service, that's, those are tasks and administrative tasks that, that SAP and um, our hyperscaler providers do for you. So once again, freeing up resources to focus on innovation and not just keeping the lights on. So with that said, one of the things that I want to point out as, as you are considering um, SAP HANA Cloud and especially the free tier option for, for HANA Cloud, um, one of the things I want to point out is that you get all of the multi-model capabilities that come with HANA Cloud. And whether it's spatial, a graph, or, um, or any of the others predictive, um, or AI ML libraries. 
And so what we want to look at today is how even with this free tier environment that you can you can go in and take your transactional data and wrap multi-model processing around it. So in this example, we're going to take the this this ski park example where we want to determine the number of skiers in line at adjacent stations. And we're going to we're going to take the transactional data and use the graph engine that comes with SAP HANA Cloud to determine how many um, skiers are in line at those adjacent stations. So imagine if you're in a park and you want to know which station or which lift or which run to take, and you want to you want to make that decision based on um, which which next leg of that journey is the the shortest. Who's how many people in that queue, which queues are the shortest, then, then we want to be able to offer that to those end users. And when you think about how you would solve this particular problem, there's really three types of examples. The first is there's a relational um, option where you can just self-join a bunch of tables together or even the same table together and um, be able to get the answer. And the problem with that approach is that it's truly not scalable. If you if we had a thousand, two thousand, five thousand stations, you just simply could not self-join that many tables together. So the second way you could do it is you could use spatial functions where I could say, based on uh, the latitude and longitude of a given station, I want to know within a radius or within a polygon what all stations actually um, are in that uh, in that polygon or in that shape. And that's not exactly accurate because because you may want to exclude or you may want to say adjacent um, stations like in this example, but inside that polygon, it, you may not be able to, to draw um, the exact polygon you want. Plus, your, your actually end users on their app um, may not have the patience or you may not even want to incorporate that feature into, uh, into the app. So, so really the, the best option is to treat um, the the layout of the park like a graph ex except, uh, itself. So being able to take a route from from one lift to the other, um, runs, lifts, all can be represented as a graph vertices and edges. And so that's what we're going to look at today. And so what I'm going to show you is in SAP HANA Cloud is how you can take your transactional and your master data in this example, we're going to be using um, skier data and how you can set up the graph engine to use that data. And then we're going to implement a solution to this scenario using two examples. One, we're going to incorporate graph script and SQL script together so you can see how I can do a graph example and a SQL script example. And then we're also going to show you how very elegantly that you can do a graph only solution. So. Let's look at those, those three uh, steps. So here we have Database Explorer. This is one of the tools that come with SAP HANA Cloud, especially the free tier. So when you set up your free tier database, there will be an actual link um, that you can click on that'll say Launch Database Explorer. And this will be able to, you'll be able to open this so you can um, begin using uh, your, your HANA Cloud database. Of course, if you have a, a third-party tool or a uh, open source tool of your choice that can connect to HANA Cloud, you're welcome to use that as well. But this is just the tool that comes with uh, SAP HANA Cloud. And so on the left, you can see you have the filter, you have your database, you have all the uh, objects that'll be in your catalog, whether it's schemas, tables, and another thing that we'll look at as part of this demo, you'll see graph spaces. So if you want to see um, objects that are in your database, you can click on this, this Explorer to the left and you can see the objects in the bottom left. So on the right, I have a series of SQL windows that are open. You can open new ones just by uh, clicking the Open SQL Console button. But we're going to go through the steps to solve that scenario. So step one will be, of course, to create a schema that we have called, uh, we're, we're calling it Skiing. And inside that schema, we'll actually have um, create two, two, sta two tables, one called stations, one called routes, then we'll add foreign key. So let's just run that now. And if we see our messages, we can see that we created those objects. 
Next, we're just going to use insert statements to, to populate those tables. But of course, if you have um, your, your integration tool or, or um, you can even upload a file from this tool if you want, but um, this is certainly not the only option, but you can uh, use the integration tool of your choice as well. Once again, as long as you have HANA client and library loaded or and it's, and it can connect to HANA. So I'm going to load that data in as well. And we can see the result that it loaded all that data and using the insert statements. Third step is we're going to create the graph space. So the graph space is logical. It sits on top of the data. And what you say is, is these are the edges and these are the vertices that I'm going to use in my graph. So in this, this case, stations are an um, example of a master data table. That, those are going to represent my vertices. Routes are going to represent my edges. And so once I have a graph space loaded, I can actually, something really cool, I can open it and see what the, the edges and the, the vertexes are, the vertices, but I can also open the graph and see a graph representation. So if you remember the picture from, um, if you remember the picture from, from the slide, now you can actually come and inside Database Explorer, see the, the graph representation of that. And so once we have the graph workspace defined, we can actually start using um, graph script to be able to do um, to graph logic. And so, but before we get to that step four, what we want to do is add the, the, the skiers. So once again, uh, master data that's going to populate as as edges we'll get to this in a minute and then we want to to add check-ins so this is going to be the the people that are standing in line at each of the stations so let's add those that would be step five and step six we get to the good part and so what we're going to do for our combined graph and sql solution is we're actually going to create two functions the first function is the graph is is a you what we call you both of them are actually user defined functions so you can create in hana cloud you can create of course procedures and functions and these especially the functions can return a table as their return and that can be used in select statements like you see below so we're, we're going to create two user defined functions one that calls the other the first one we're going to create is actually implemented using graph script. So we're going to find the graph, the vertices. Um, we're going to find the adjacent stations based on neighbors. And also I want to point out that we're going to pass in the starting station. So I found a station 10 and I want to know the number of station stops radiating out from station 10. This neighbors function is going to tell me those um, those neighbors and and so we're going to wrap around the determine adjacent stations function we're going to wrap around it um, the queue lengths so we're going to call that um that let's see we're going to call that first function right here and so now notice we're not no longer writing in the second function we're no longer we're not writing a graph script we're writing actually a sql script and so we're going to take the adjacent stations from that first function we're going to just use an aggregate um, count to get the queue lengths, and then we're going to return a join between the two. And so when we do that, looking at station one, let's start just radiating, radiating out one, um, one level. We're going to see that, um, oh, we got to create it first. Let's create it first. Now we can see the result where we can see from station 10, you can only go to station two, for example, station 10, you can actually go to, I'm sorry, station one, you can only go to station two. So if we wanted to radiate out two stops, then all, all we have to do is change the parameter in the select statement. And, and these select statements are just standard SQL statements. So you can build them dynamically in your application. You can, um, you can call them, um, you can pass in the parameters. 
you can call them from um, whether it's web apps, regular applications, um, however it is you choose. It's just standard SQL. And once again, this is when we talk about HANA Cloud as the foundation for intelligent data applications. This is an example of what we're talking about is we're building all of this complex logic at the database and your application is just passing parameters and getting the results back, really making for a lightweight layer um, at the, on the application side. So we can run it again. And uh, let me move this out of the way. Not sure why this, okay. And so now we can see radiating out two stops, we can see the next set of stations. And so the last thing I wanted to show was how would we do a graph only solution? So, so we saw how you could take graph code and SQL script code and combine them together. But now what would happen if we wanted to, um, to only do a graph version? So what we can do is create a second um, graph space, a graph workspace. And so this time, if you notice, we have a second set of vertices, a sec second set of edges that we're gonna include in, in that graph space. And really very simple, the, uh, the new function is, is partly the same. We're still defining our vertices and we're still finding the neighbors. But now inside of our return statement, we're just going to count the edges of the neighbors where the label equals station queues. So if you remember, in our graph workspace that we define, we used a label called stations, a label called skiers, um, a label called station queues for the edges, and a label called routes for this set of edges for the routes. And so what's great is we can use these labels in our code when we reference. So, so those attributes actually come into our code. And so by saying that we're only interested in, in this case, the, the edges called station queues, once again, from representing where a, a skier has checked into a station, then we're only gonna filter for those. So, so we're gonna say, count the number of edges um, that are station queues for each of the adjacent stations. So um, we went from several lines of code, maybe 40 or 35, down to about 15, just using graph functions. And so let's, create it and then we can run it. And so in this case, you can see um, that we have the same result. And so what we've seen in, in this demo is, is how you can use HANA Cloud truly as your foundation for intelligent data applications, because not only does it have the speed, but it allows you to build lean architectures. And what we mean by that is, is that you only have to store your data once but in the right place based on the user access speed. And because of that, that architectural simplicity and because of that speed, it really opens the door for you to be innovative and to build those intelligent data apps. And we saw that by going through and setting up a graph workspace, by solving this business problem with both a graph and a SQL solution and coming to the same result using a graph only solution. So with that said, um, Ali, Maybe I can turn it back to you um, to close it out. Great. Uh, thank you, Daniel, for showing us uh, how we can benefit from SAP HANA Cloud. Uh, if you'd like to try SAP HANA Cloud today, uh, you can visit sap.com backslash BTP or scan the QR code here behind us uh, and click on try for free. Uh, with this $0 uh, pay-as-you-go model, you have access to over 30 services that you can uh, start right now in a production environment and never lose any of your work. Uh, if you have any questions about the SAP, S about SAP HANA Cloud or this demo, please feel free to drop them in the comments below and we'll be happy to answer. Uh, and with that, thank you again and have a great day. All right. Thank you.